If there's one thing I know is that you need to start considering deep work as a routine to integrate it into your life. In this video, we're going to talk about the book Deep Work by Dr. Cole Newport. And we're going to cover how you can integrate this practice and how you can make deep work a habit in your work life so you'll be more productive and achieve progress in your most meaningful goals. Let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Dan Sylvester and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe right now to get new videos every week about productivity and personal development. Let's get started. So what is deep work? Deep work are professional activities performed in a state of distraction-free concentration that push your cognitive abilities to their limit. So those who cultivate the skill of deep work and make it the core of their working life are the ones that will thrive. Because in the knowledge economy, there will be three types of people that have a particular advantage. One, those who can work with intelligent machines, programmers, developers, engineers. Two, owners of capital or people who have access to that capital. And three, superstars in their field of work. So deep work focuses on the third type of people, superstars in their field of work. To become a superstar in your field of work, you're gonna need two things. One, the ability to quickly master hard things. And two, to produce at an elite level, both in terms of speed and quality of your work. To make deep work a habit, you need to add routines into your working life. This reduces the willpower necessary to transition into a state of unbroken concentration. There are four types of deep work philosophies, monastic, bimodal, rhythmic, and journalistic. Let's go into each one in detail. In the monastic philosophy, you isolate yourself for long periods of times without distraction, so no shallow work, the opposite of deep work, is allowed. In the bimodal philosophy, you reserve a few consecutive days to focus and work deeply and then leave the rest of your week to complete shallow work. The rhythmic philosophy is the easiest one for someone getting started and for most knowledge office workers. What you're going to do is you take three to four hours every day to work deeply and then you allow the rest of the day for shallow work. And then we have the journalistic philosophy. In this philosophy what you're going to do is alternate your day between deep and shallow work as you see fit. In this philosophy, what you're trying to do is alternate between deep and shallow work as it fits your blocks of time. So go ahead and pick a philosophy right now that you're going to have for your deep work efforts. As I said before, the rhythmic approach is the one that works best for most people and actually is the one I use. So what I do is I focus my mornings for deep work, three, four, maybe five hours, and then in the afternoons, I can let the shallow work come in. And what this means for me is in the morning, I reserve it for creating videos like this or also writing articles. And then in the afternoons, I can do a little bit of management on the site. So probably I can edit the videos or I can edit the articles articles, publish them, promote them and that sort of stuff. But my deep work, the ones that I need to be really focused, I do that in the mornings. So my recommendation is that you follow at first the rhythmic philosophy, but if you want to integrate by model or monastic because it works in your job, then you should absolutely do that. A word of warning though, the journalistic philosophy is the hardest one to get started, so I do not recommend that one. Alright, so the second thing you want to do is commit to scheduling deep work blocks into your calendar. This is a strategy known as time blocking. What you want to do is schedule ahead of time when you'll be able to complete your deep work efforts. So for example, when you're planning your week, you're going to decide ahead of time when you're going to commit to deep work efforts. And that's how I plan my weeks. I normally do this exercise of planning my weeks on a Friday. So for example, I could decide I'm going to record videos just like this one on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then I'm going to reserve uh, Thursday and Friday to write articles. So to recap, if you want to make deep work a practice, not only you need a strategy, but then you need to schedule ahead of time, decide what are you going to do on those blocks. And that's a great strategy to reduce willpower when it comes to actually work. When you sit down, you already know what you're going to be working on. It also allows you to control your week a lot better because you already know what you're supposed to do on those blocks of times. The third thing you're going to need is to decide how you're going to perform this deep work routine. And what really helps here is to add rituals. So you need to think about questions like, where are you going to perform this work? How are you going to perform this work? Can you develop a ritual that gets into this unbroken 
a state of concentration. So for example, a lot of people that commit to deep work in the morning have sort of a ritual that helps them transition into this deep work schedule. So this could be making your coffee or making your tea because then you associate that routine into going into deep work afterwards. What then happens is after you make your cup of coffee or after you make your cup of tea, you then ease into transition to deep work. So the cue of drinking tea or drinking your coffee helps you transition into deep work. So think about routines and rituals that you can add that it will help you transition into deep work. Perhaps taking a shower or dressing nicely before starting to work. One that I use personally is I use the same playlist for different types of work. So for example, if I'm writing an article, I will have a specific playlist that I play. And because I always use the same playlist, it's a cue to my brain telling him, this is writing time. The minute I put the playlist on, my brain knows it's about to get to writing. So think about the routines, the rituals that you can use to help your brain ease into deep work efforts. The last thing that you're going to need to make deep work a habit is a shutdown ritual. A shutdown ritual is exactly what you think it is. It's something that signals your brain this is the end of your work day. And it's crucial that you have one for a couple of reasons. The first one is downtime. The ability to rest aids to insights in the morning or the day after. And also when you take that downtime to recharge, you're going to help your brain execute more efficiently tomorrow. You need that energy to work deeply. And finally, the work that you do after normal working hours is usually not important and usually not that good. So you'll need to, in the morning, go and correct the errors, the mistakes that you made the night or the evening before. Obviously, everyone has active weeks from time to time, but this should be an habitual practice. So what do you need to do for your shutdown ritual? How can you implement one? Once again, you need to decide on a couple of things that you're gonna do every day at the end of your workday to signal your brain, today the work has been done. It's a routine that you can develop to tell your brain, today's work is done. Mine is very simple. At 5.30, I have an alarm clock telling me I have about 30 minutes left and this is time to transition into my shutdown ritual. Then what I do is I capture all the open loops that I have. If I have a couple of things to read, I'll have a look. I'll close my emails, archive, you know, deal with that stuff. Also the lead files that I'm not using it anymore. And normally this takes about 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes at the max. So I know that at 6 p.m. I'll be done for the day. And what you want to do is rewire your brain for deep work. And Dr. Colney Report provides a few strategies to do just that. The first one is you need to start embracing boredom. In today's world, our brains have been rewired and expect and request distractions all the time. This is the notifications that you get from your phone, the uh, emails that are coming in all the time, all social media, all things around you are always pinging your brain here, here, now, now distraction. So what tends to happening is that at any moment of boredom, we check our phones. And you can see this everywhere. If you're standing in line, what do you do? You reach for your phone. If you go to the toilet, you reach for your phone. If you're um, cooking dinner, waiting for something to happen, when you're bored, What's going to happen? You're going to reach your phone. So you need to fight this impulse. And there are a couple of ways that you can do this. The first one is to decide in advance when you're going to cave into these distractions. So for example, you could make a very simple rule that every time you're in deep work, you're not going to cave into those distractions. Or perhaps you only allow distractions like that to happen at the end of your workday. For example, you can make a rule to only check social media after your work day is done. So think about other rules that you can make to your wife so you don't have to constantly check your smartphone. Again, you're trying to train your brain to fight distraction and to embrace boredom. So the second one is called productive meditation. He offers a couple ways that you can do this. One is just sitting down and focusing on your breath, just like normal meditation work, or other activities such as walking, jogging, driving, showering, for example. Showering is very good to, to have new thoughts into your mind. What you want is to be occupied physically, but not mentally. And then what you need is to focus your attention on a single well-defined problem. So for example, when you're in the shower, you can try to focus on a problem that you have at work and then try to come up with solutions to that problem. Walking is also very good to do this. 
And the final thing that I found very valuable in his book was the chapter called Quit Social Media. In this chapter, Dr. Cole Newport argues that social media is fragmenting your attention. And so it's reducing your ability to concentrate. And so this makes it a lot difficult for you to improve your ability to work deeply. So he proposes a test run, a very simple 30 day test run. What you're going to do is without deactivating any of these services or deleting your accounts, you're going to consciously step away from social media for the next 30 days. And then after those 30 days, you're going to ask yourself a couple of questions. Was it impossible for you to stay away? Or was just a little bit of an inconvenience for your life? Did you miss it? Did you miss social media while you were away for those 30 days? And most importantly, did anyone care that you were gone from those networks? I'll go as far as also include the news on uh, this type of distractions because the news give you constant reinforcement of new things to check. So perhaps you could do this on social media and as well as news. And then you want to fill these new periods of boredom with quality alternative. So a quality alternative that I really like is watching documentaries. So you don't need to become a monk. What you need to do is start directing your focus and your attention from time to time into more deep work activities. If you're giving your brain at all times distractions, 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 what do you think your brain is going to look for when you're working? Distractions, obviously. So by being a little bit more deliberate on how you manage your attention, your focus, you're giving your brain that ability, that muscle is growing for the ability to concentrate. And at the end of the day, that's what you want to achieve because as I said, deep work is a very great practice to introduce into your productivity arsenal. So if you were on the fence, if you should or not read this book, Deep Work by Dr. Cole Newport, I highly recommend it. You can also find the summary of the book on my website. I'm going to link that in the description below. 